Not long ago, Nokia launched their first Android smartphone ever. And while the overall package seems fine, you can see my video about it right here, the smartphone comes with a strangely low-end Snapdragon 430 processor. And Nokia is not the first company to not take the mobile processor as seriously as they should. And if you want to understand why, then you've come to the right place. I'm Martin from Tech Altar, and this is the 12th episode of the Story Behind series. Let's go. Before we get to the processors, let's do a quick thought experiment first. I want you to think of yourself as a product manager at a company like Nokia. Let's say management from up there tells you to create a new smartphone for the price point of 1,700 yuan. What's your task? Simple. You have to mix and match the specs and the features in order to, at the end of the day, make the most money for your company. There are only two ways you can do that. Your phone needs to sell in large quantities and it needs to have a decent profit margin. Keeping that in mind, your task seems fairly simple. You just need to look at all the individual features of the phone, like the processor or the storage, see how much improving each feature actually improves the user experience and compare that against the cost of each improvement. And voila, in theory, that's all there really is to it. But of course, the reality isn't as simple as that. Most customers don't actually know what's best for them. So as a product manager, you have to pick your specs, not only to create the best possible user experience, but also to create a spec sheet that will convince your unknowing customers to buy your phone. And since those two things are often actually contradicting each other, your job is to balance the two all while keeping the costs in mind, of course. So how is all of this connected to mobile processors? Well, what I refer to as the processor should actually be called the SOC or system on a chip. And it is arguably the most complex part of your phone. A modern Snapdragon SOC, for example, includes everything from your CPU to your GPU, your 4G and Wi-Fi radios, your image signal processor that controls your camera, and a ton of other stuff. It affects virtually any part of your phone, and therefore I would argue that it is the single most important component of your device. Definitely something you as a product manager would want to select carefully, right? But don't forget the other side of the equation, you know, the part about customers actually caring about this feature. Now, if there is one single component in a smartphone that the average consumer doesn't comprehend well at all, it has to be the SOC. Not only is it way too complex for most people to wrap their heads around, chip makers also haven't done a good job at marketing their products. Starting with the names, I dare you to walk up to five people on the street and ask them which processor is better and why. The MT6753 or the MT8735 or the Snapdragon 820, which in most of East Asia is simply marketed as the MSM8996. Seriously, as if these things weren't complex enough on their own, their names look like random strings of characters to consumers. Add to the mix that most of the easy to understand performance metrics seem to be completely meaningless, like how the lowly Snapdragon 430 has eight cores, while the much more powerful Snapdragon 820 only has four, and you end up with a system that consumers have no simple way of navigating. Also factor in that SOCs can easily be one of the most expensive components of your smartphone, and suddenly you, the product manager, have a dilemma. Remember that everything you do is figuring out what trade-offs are worth making. You know that putting a better SOC into a phone will significantly improve the user experience, but not only will most of your consumers completely ignore this benefit when making a purchase, a good SOC is so expensive that you will actually have to give up on other features that would come cheaper and would be easier to market. Think of RAM or storage, for example. More is better, right? Sure, there are differences in memory speed, for example, but everyone understands this fundamental logic. This is something that consumers get. Now, especially in the case of RAM, I think the user experience improvements of adding anything more than, let's say, 3 gigs are pretty slim, especially in mid-range phones. But most users don't know that. And if you add that memory is much cheaper than SOCs, then again, the case for prioritizing memory over the SOC is growing even stronger. So here's how I would make a choice if I were a product manager. I would take a good long look at who it is that I'm trying to sell my phones to. If my target audience is tech savvy and actually cares and knows about the user experience, 
I would prioritize the user experience and with it, the SOC. If they don't know too much about this, then I'd be inclined to do things like adding four gigs of RAM and simply ignoring the SOC in my marketing materials. So if you see phones like that, I think you should know who they're aimed at. By the way, one way to get around this would be to look at what Apple is doing. If you ask the average iPhone user how many CPU cores and gigabytes of RAM their devices have, they would probably tell you that not only do they not know, they also couldn't care less. What they know is that when they buy the latest iPhone, it will perform as well as they expect it to. Sure, Apple is uniquely positioned to do this by only selling flagship devices and by designing both the SoC and the operating system themselves, but hey, it works. And it seems like other smartphone makers simply don't have a brand that's strong enough to pull off the same thing. And you know what? I don't even blame the smartphone manufacturers for this, for a change. I think it is all on the incompetent chip makers who can't explain to the average user what the benefits of using one chip over another chip are. And as long as that stays this way, smartphone manufacturers will have to use cheap tricks to convince non-techie buyers to buy their smartphones. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And also, if you want to see more from the Story Behind series, where I take a deeper look at the unexplored and unexpected trends of the tech industry, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and also that bell button next to the subscribe button so you double subscribe. And uh, follow me on the socials, because I only post videos on YouTube every once in a while, but I post a lot more stuff on the social media channels. So follow me there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.